and week number five. So we are really moving now. Liz is going to come up and do the first five minutes uh, or so and kind of prepare the ground and give some basics concerning God's kingdom. And then I'll come up and take the remaining time to share concerning the prophetic mystery of God's kingdom purpose. Just to review, we uh, were talking about the atmosphere of Eden and how we carry that atmosphere because Jesus restored Eden to us and that creates an environment. So it changes the environment and it, and it makes sense wherever we actually set our foot on whatever ground, we can claim that for God. That's right. Because we're not just reconciling people and we're ambassadors of reconciliation, we're reconciling everything back to God. Mm -hmm. So, and especially people, right? Because mm -hmm. they're gonna make a big difference. Then we discussed the fact that um, Adam was the first king of the earth. I'm gonna skip the third one to go to the fourth one because we're discussing how God uh, gave them a commission, right? Yes. He told them to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, and to take dominion. So he gave us all the things that we need to actually take that dominion. Amen. He made that environment ready for us to do that. And uh, King, and actually, and this is the, the fourth one that says God gave, the fourth point we're going to go into, God gave Adam dominion over everything that God created. Yes. That's what we got. <laughs> and he knows that that's how he made us. To take dominion. We Amen. like that. Amen. God actually made us to take dominion. We like that. We like to have that dominion to be able to do our assignments in God. So Genesis 1.26, let us make mankind in our image. Well, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother lesson right there. Let us make mankind in our image in our likeness that they may rule over the fish the birds the livestock every every creature except people mm -hmm. he was talking about the the creatures in the on the ground on the on this under the sea the birds over us we have dominion over them we can subdue but dominion doesn't mean that we whip them <laughs> dominion means that we love them and we use them. Now, the king rules, right? A king rules. When we say kingdom, the kingdom of God, what we are here on earth, we bring in the kingdom of heaven to earth, so is the kingdom of God here. Kingdom is exactly what it says, king's dominion. Kingdom is the king's dominion so adam was the first king because he had dominion and that's important for our next lessons to understand that the king has dominion and god made us priests and kings with him on the earth so we are restoring that dominion and subduing all the powers that are taking that are that are trying to take dominion over the earth that belongs to god that's right we are his ambassadors to do that, his representatives. And I'll tell you what, we better represent God well. Mm -hmm. And the way he wants us to represent him with people is to love them. Amen. Because we already know we have dominion, so we don't need to dominate anyone. <laughs> Just the, and the Amen. last thing, when we go into the next thing that we're going to be going to, the dominion is, over, of course, not over people. When Adam had communion with God in the garden, he received from God every day so that he, knew, he, so that he would know how to rule and how to have dominion on the earth. And that's yes. what we're going to go next time, the communion. God commune with Adam in the cool of the day. We're talking tonight in our 12-week series on your purpose and vision as an ambassador of God's kingdom. You know that's what you are, right? Yes. We're talking tonight about the prophetic mystery of God's kingdom purpose. Oh, it sounds very deep, doesn't it? 
but uh, you'll find that it's very profound because it is really simple when you see it through uh, the understanding of God's kingdom perspective. So we want to talk about that tonight, rehearsing. So far we've shared uh, about purpose, then protocol. Last week we talked about the path or your DNA of progress. But now we want to talk about the prophetic mystery. Why are you on this planet? Why are you here? It's not a mistake. And it's probably about more than you ever dreamed. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're here for. It's our passion to help you discover the greater levels of your purpose. So 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 says, We also have a more sure word of prophecy. And if you want to write this down, the word prophecy could be divided as prophonics <laughs> or provision. Prophecy is the speaking of what you see. What God gives you to see, it's the speaking of it. Vision, I'm making it simple for now, you know. In the next classes that we do, the next class series, we're going to go deeper into some of these subjects. This is kind of an overview. But just for simplistic uh, purposes, we'll just say vision is what God opens up and reveals to you. But prophetics is what you speak as a result of it. What you decree or declare in the name of the king. So it says, as we said in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. And look what happens. Whereunto you do well that you take heed. It's worth your attention. As unto a light that's shining in a dark place. And dark place there isn't talking about something uh, negative, but dark place there is literally meaning mystery. So we have a light that's shining in a mystery until the day dawn. Have you ever heard someone say, this just dawned on me? Yes. <laughs> because it was there all along, but you just saw it. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. That's from 2 Peter 1.19. So, God through prophetic um, revelation will begin to unfold a mystery. It will begin to bring light to that mystery. Amen. And this is important to understand because... You know, some people would say that prophecy is no longer um, in operation. But I believe it is because not everything's been accomplished in the Bible yet. Prophecy as far as announcing what Jesus would do has been fulfilled. So, if you want to write this down, prophecy in the Old Testament was foretelling. Or forward telling. You got that? Prophecy in, the Old Testament. Prophecy in the Old Testament was forward telling or foretelling. But prophecy in the New Testament, after Jesus has been manifested, is forth telling. So prophecy confirms itself. Old Testament, foretelling forward telling after Jesus manifests forth telling so we boldly speak look on your sheet if you have it to point number one a God God has given us a God ordained prophetic memory we, we touched on this last week right mm -hmm. but I want to kind of get into this God has given us a prophetic memory that unlocks an unfolding mystery. And we don't don't get too nervous. We're going to get into this, okay? A God-given prophetic memory 
unlocks the unfolding mystery. God has already put everything in his word. We don't need to add to or take away from it. In fact, if we do that, we're in trouble. So we don't add to or take away from the logos or the written word. But the written word, the logos word, is a living word. So it will come alive and reveal to us things we didn't know was in there. Amen. So God has given us a prophetic memory. Because when you see something in the word, have you ever done that? You, you see something and you're like, oh God, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. When did you put this in here? Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it was always there. But guess what? He spoke to your prophetic memory. In other words, he revealed something to you you always knew you didn't know. Yeah. Wow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. You always knew it in your DNA or your design after his image. But your mind is just not getting the memo. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> God has given you a prophetic memory. Like we said last week, much like an apple seed has already got the picture of what it will be as an apple. That's why it doesn't turn into an orange. Okay? So, God has put in us his DNA and we're just getting acquainted with what he already said we are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, Adam's sin, now get this, Adam's sin corrupted the purpose of memory, mm -hmm. binding it to the past. Have you ever noticed the way the devil attacks you? He tries to remind you of something you did in the past. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> A lot of your fears are from something you experienced in the past. We waste, although I, I thank God, as I think we said on Sunday in our little Facebook Live time together, I love and I cherish precious memories. You know, my wedding day with this Mexican girl over here. And, you know, our children and our grandchildren being born. And, and you know, not so much during the time of they were being born, but when they finally got here. <laughs> you know, and, and some of those are precious memories. And, and God... God gives us that capacity to remember that. But he didn't really develop our memory to be chained to the past. We can learn from the past. We have foundations set that we learn from the past, but we're not stuck in the past. That's where the devil wants you because he doesn't want you going where you're going. Because he knows what harm you're going to do to him. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen? So, God gave us a memory for what was to come. Adam's sin corrupted the purpose of memory, binding it to the past. But Jesus, who we know and call the second Adam, redeemed us to a prophetic memory. He reacquainted us with who God always intended us to be. Doesn't matter who told you what about you in the past. It's God who has the final word. So we are constantly, that's why when you see something in the word that lights you up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit ignites you. Amen. The reason is because it speaks to a you, you didn't know you were there, it was in there. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Doesn't that do something to your inner man? <laughs> Why would it do that? Except that he says, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I want you to become acquainted with that. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. God calls those things that be not. You know the scripture. God calls those things that be, 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 not. They presently be. They presently not be. <laughs> As though they were. Sometimes I hear it misquoted. People say, God calls those things that be not as though they are. But 
it didn't say are, it says were. Because before you were born, it were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of grammar teachers out there are going to just say, Dr. Rick. <laughs> but I want you to get this point because it's so important. God calls those things that be not, it's a prophetic memory. Call those things that be not as though they were because they will. Write this down. We are a snapshot of the kingdom that's coming. Your life and my life is a snapshot of the kingdom that is manifesting on the earth. You being born further defeated the devil. <laughs> Just being born. A revelation. Because, you know, I've heard this oftentimes. People say, oh, God gave me a revelation in the night. And I'm going to go on TV and talk about it. Or I'm going to write a book. But you might want to wait. Because a revelation, some of you have heard me say this in the Lake Worth class. A revelation is really just an introduction to another level of mystery. <laughs> God is just introducing you to the next level. Doesn't mean we know it all yet. Yes. First Corinthians 4 and verse 1, first part. Let a man so account of us. Is that you? Are you us? Yep. Yes. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery. Mm. The mysteries of God. Would you like to hear a little tidbit? Yes. The word mystery? doesn't even appear until the New Testament. We are unfolding. Everybody say unfolding. Unfolding, unfolding. This is about unfolding a mystery. It takes time. It takes levels. And you can't think that nothing's happening because most of it's happening inside of you. So let me give this to you. And um, are you all about ready to get some things revealed? Matthew 13 and 11. Jesus said... It is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but not to them. He was in a crowd. You know the story, perhaps. He was in a crowd and he gave a parable. A parable is a story with a point. <laughs> And most of the people who just wanted something given to them easy just looked puzzled and walked away. Jesus didn't go after them. No. no. This is why I haven't tried to get a big crowd for this Destiny Group school. I want treasure seekers. Amen? Amen. Jesus didn't go after them. He walked away. And only those who really wanted to know what it meant followed him. They truly were followers. And they, they asked him, they weren't too proud to say, you know what, Master, I have no clue what you were saying, but I'd love to know. So he says, okay, it's given to you to know. The mysteries. Woo! This mystery is about unfolding a plan about unfolding a blueprint that God has already said it's done in heaven. Now let it be done on earth. Thy kingdom come. How? By thy will be done. Where? On earth as it already is in heaven. So when you were born, you threatened the devil right away. Because you carried within you the DNA of the manifestation of the kingdom. But it's a mystery. Part of the reason why it remains a mystery is because he has to develop you to reveal it. The world doesn't even know what's in you yet. There are things you're going to do that the world has no idea that can be done. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to introduce some things. You out there as well are going to introduce some things in the world because God put you on this planet to be his agent of change. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Jesus said it's given for you to know the mysteries because you came seeking the treasure. But to them, it's not. Not because he didn't want to share it with those people or he was mad at them. But because they didn't have a heart to learn. Or to investigate. A mystery requires a search. A mystery requires a search of unsearchable riches. As it says in Ephesians 3.8. I declare right now, prophetically, to you in this class, to you there online, God is going to reveal things to you, treasures in you, unsearchable riches that you didn't even dream was in there. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid. Yes. Just say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Because he wouldn't reveal it if he didn't think you could handle it. A mystery did not just happen when it was discovered, but kept hidden since the world began. That's what it says in Romans 16, 25. Since the world began. I think that's long before you were born. <laughs> Pretty sure. I put this on your sheet also. The Greek word for mystery is mysterion. It means to shut up, to guard the contents, to treasure. And I, if you want to put one more on there, I didn't put to cover. Now I want to show you how, how deep simple things are in God. Okay, you ready? A mystery covers, but when a mystery is revealed, it discovers. A mystery covers and protects and hides a treasure, but when it's time to be revealed, it discovers. God is about to open some things to us. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for revealing mysteries that we haven't even seen yet. We thank you in advance, Father God. Hallelujah. Whew. I could just run around this place right now. <clears throat> Remember we said in... Um, Romans 16, 25, that this mystery didn't just happen, but it was dis just when it was discovered, but kept hidden since the world began. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 7 that echoes that. We speak the wisdom of God how? In a mystery. In a mystery. Mm -hmm. Even the hidden wisdom ordained by God before the world began unto our glory. Now, now get this. When he says unto our glory, he means or in due time for the hidden treasure to be revealed through us. So he ordained and gave forth this mystery, even hidden wisdom. You need to circle that on your page. The mystery is wrapped in wisdom. The mystery is wrapped in wisdom. This is why knowledge will say everything it knows. But wisdom will speak only when it's time. Why? Because it's hiding the treasure. Amen? Wow. God spoke the mystery before the world began. It says here in 1 Corinthians 2, 7. And kept it hidden, revealed some of it, most of it through Christ. As bringing now the elements of reconciliation 
to where now the Holy Ghost could be in us, the life of God, mm -hmm. and we yeah. could begin to be the agents of change. But he hid it in a treasure or a mystery unto our glory. That's what it says there, right? Help me out of class. Is that yes. right? Unto our, unto our glory, he says. Mm -hmm. Meaning, or the due time, it'll be revealed through us. I thank God for pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, those in leadership corporately. I thank God for them. This is not to take away from them at all. But all of us are ministers on some level. And we are not called just to be an audience that sits no. and just hears no. with no doing. Amen? Amen? Faith without works is yeah. So we've got to begin to be activated as the body mm -hmm. and begin to move the muscles yeah. and begin to say, you know what, God, Church. what is it you want to reveal through me? That you chose me, not for me or my credit, but to glorify you. And I'm telling you, there are some powerful champions that are even now being raised up on the scene. Yes. And they may not be people that some people would think. <laughs> I know I'm one of the foolish things that can found the wise. <laughs> Me too. Amen. You too, right, man? Well, you know, and, and I think of that, what you said at the beginning. Yes. that little, you know, I had this vision of all over the world, I think we light up. Yeah. There's people that light up with the light of the Lord, yeah. the true light of God. It's like taking a, a what do you call it? A, a snapshot. 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 And yeah. we have, you know, we, we, we're all together. God has us all over the world. Yeah. In very strategic places that we don't even realize just how strategic. Absolutely. Absolutely. A mystery conceals before it reveals. A mystery conceals before it reveals. And you could pair that up with precept becomes concept. The precepts of God become your concepts or your perspectives. Mm -hmm. So literally, we get the word concept and we use the word conceive. Mm -hmm. So you've conceived a vision inside of you and it's a baby growing. Mm -hmm. But it came from a precept. It came from a concealed seed that begins to grow, and before you know it, you conceive, and then you produce. That's why it has to be careful. Yeah. What are precepts? That's okay. right. Because that's how we develop a concept and a perspective. So we usually think of, a, uh, of ministry as declaring, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to declare the gospel. And that's true. That's fine. And it is, but it's also unveiling, revealing through a time cultivated process. We like to, I don't know why, but we like to speed up the process and think in one service, everybody's going to uh, get saved and understand it all and be back at church ready to get involved. <laughs> it's, it's a process. We gotta allow, you know. In fact, it could be. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> it could be they didn't get saved at your church. It could be they already got saved before they got to your church, mm -hmm. right. but they just made a public confession. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. So we don't know where people are, mm -hmm. but it's a process. And I'm still working out my salvation. Mm -hmm. I'm saved, are you? Mm -hmm. But I'm working it out daily. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. It's an unveiling more than a just a declaration. It starts with a declaration, of course. Mm -hmm. So let's go to this very quickly in the last few moments. No, These mysteries eventually will manifest. Yes. Yes, I mean. God doesn't have you keep everything in forever, mm -hmm. but they'll begin to manifest. It's in you, and now something comes through you. So, these mysteries bring manifestations or the miraculous. Yes, thank you. 
of God's presence. And I thank God for miracles of healing and um, great things that we see oftentimes in church. That's part of it. But also a miracle is, a, is an invention only God could have given somebody. Now let me give you what, what, uh, what we're talking about. The opening of God's prophetic kingdom mysteries brings transformation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Literally translating us into eternal kingdom purpose. Bringing us to the stature of Christ. When, when, when the mystery working inside of you, the prophetic mystery, and again, everything God does is pro. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You heard that in the class down in the Lake Worth, and I'm just a broken record. I just keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. Say it with me. Everything God does is pro. pro. Amen? Yes. Got it out there? Progress. Process. Prophecy. Pro, pro, pro. So God is constantly developing and producing inside of us and eventually it manifests yes, and usually yes, surprises yes. us yeah. <laughs> how often have we been asking god for some something really to take place and when it does we're surprised <laughs> I, like, Where did that come from? I mean he actually did it but he did it through you he, he involves you and me see that's why we had to start off with purpose in week number one or two protocol then the path last week, and now we're talking about opening a prophetic mystery. It begins to open doors and open borders because God begins to manifest through you and you begin to do things you never dreamed you could do. Have any of you ever found yourself saying things that you said, that didn't come from me? <laughs> it did come from you. It came from God in you. Yeah. So let me give you just another perspective as we close out for this, this Thursday of miracles, signs, and wonders from this perspective of manifested mysteries. And again, it can be what we've often seen. Well, that was a miracle. Uh, they grew another eyeball or, you know, they was miraculously healed. Thank God. I thank God for healing you. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I'm not taking away from that, but we have been a little bit uh, limiting because of what God is saying in the midst of these things. You know, it's not just knowing what, but it's knowing why. Amen? It's great to see what's happening, but God wants you to see why it happened. I know right now there's people waiting on the next wave of a revival. Yeah. But you know, they will only know what happened. Yeah. But God says, I want you to go down deep what started the wave. Yeah. The plate's shifting, know why it happened. In fact, don't wait in the next wave, be the next yeah. wave. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So look at this. When God speaks of miracles, signs, and wonders, he's talking about what happens to the world when you start manifesting. <laughs> Miracles reveal there's a shift happening. Do you remember I, I mentioned, I think in week number one or two, every time the Holy Spirit moves, nothing will be the same again. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Even though some people go backwards in their mind or they may go back to what they knew because they didn't proceed forward. When the Holy Spirit moves, God shifted the world into the next yes, place. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that's why we can't go back to a revival of 1965 yeah. or to what we knew. Because God is the same yesterday, today and forever, but we're changing and growing. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we've got to keep progressing with God. Pro. There's another pro. So miracles, whenever God gives a miracle, he's revealing there's a shift. Again, not just what happened, but why it happened. You say, well, you know, uh, God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. 
the yeah, but it says also in the scripture, he's made these things known to the church. <laughs> so we need to know why and he will reveal it. Miracles reveal a shifting. Signs, whenever you see signs in the, the word of God, it reveals a significant change. Have you ever been thankful for signs along the highway yes. yeah. that told you that there was an exit coming up that you needed? <laughs> so we oftentimes begin to praise the billboard. We, we worship the billboard instead of reading what it says. Mm -hmm. Did you see what happened? Yeah, but did you read why it happened? Why Does this make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So important if we really want to go into that next level with God. You'll never understand your purpose with what happens to you. You'll never know it. And the devil will always give you an ulterior lie to what's happened. But once you know why, I call it intel. How many of you had the intel? Right. <laughs> then no matter what the devil tries to make out of it, you can put him down. So miracles reveal a shifting. Signs always reveal significant change. And wonders are the next level of searching the why. And I know this is going to sound very simple, but I love it if it's made simple for me. Wonders are simply saying, I wonder, <laughs> what is God doing? Remember, those are the ones Jesus said it's for you to know the kingdom. So we shouldn't get caught up in miracle signs and wonders. In fact, we know Jesus said an evil and adulterous generation seeks the sign. You can't see that. But there'll be no sign given to it except for the sign of Jonah. Mm -hmm. And he got swallowed by a whale. Mm -hmm. I don't want that kind of sign. Mm -hmm. But he says that we become the sign. Signs follow us. Is this good? Yes. So, miracles reveal a shifting. I thank God for miracles that I can see the what. But I want to know the why. And if the why comes that it's just trying to promote what a man's doing, then I don't want that why. I need to know God is glorified. Yes. He's taking us to a new <laughs> place. Signs reveal the significant change and wonders are searching the why of the next level. So the goal in Ephesians 3, 9 is, and to make all men see. Mm -hmm. What is the fellowship of the mystery? <laughs> Did you know we're all having fellowship tonight? Yes. And we don't even have any tur uh, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is we eat. Uh, we, we can have fellowship without food. Because we're fellowshipping around a mystery. Although we do have a little food here, for those of you that could be here. But we're fellowshipping around a mystery. Mm -hmm. or can we go as far as to say everybody that's here, I know some of you are just looking in, but everybody that's here, I'm going to take a chance. Would you say we're family? Yes. Yeah. You heard him say yes. Yeah. <laughs> My son said he's for sure. Now, what does that mean? That means... That there's true fellowship. Yes. Uh -huh. We're fellows in the same ship. Yay. <laughs> that are discovering the mystery, but we're just discovering it on different levels. Yeah. Yeah. Everything I'm teaching tonight will speak to each person in this room in a different place. Yeah. But isn't that great how the Holy Ghost does? Yes. So all we got to do is share it and the Holy Ghost will begin yeah. to teach it. Because he's the teacher. So it says, make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world mm -hmm. hath been hid in God, mm -hmm. who created all things by Jesus Christ, the Word. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. We're here for you. Our passion is to get you into the next level of your purpose. So you know what, when, why, and how God is going to use you. Amen. So until next week, we're going to keep talking here. We say, what do we say, guys? To the king. To the king.